Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome. Uh, beginning uh, here, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. I have a motion by Lynn Blad, seconded by Sturt Event, to approve the agenda for August 16, 2016. Any discussion? Um, yeah. We're, didn't you have an addition of something that you had talked about? Yeah, yeah we will uh, be uh, some reports from school board members that aren't listed in here. We will add a couple of reports uh, to that section. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion passes. Moving on to the next item is spotlight on recognition. Superintendent and staff. And superintendent, which we have we're moving right. And we'll have uh, Jael and David come on up. Good evening. Um, the video we are about to see is um, a video presentation for an annual report to our community. We typically have an annual report that we mail to our community members in October, but this year we decided to do something different. This is the first time that we have had a communication specialist on board who has great video experience, and as we have documented and written about these stories which are mailed to our community, we decided that it's a good opportunity for people to actually see some of those stories in there come alive. And um, it's not a very long video, but it highlights all the academic achievement in the district, community support that we have received throughout the year, throughout all the buildings, and some of the new initiatives that our district has undertaken to continue to support students and families. So while we hope you enjoy it, we also just want to add that we are always very grateful for the support that the community has given to our students. We see this every time we go into the classrooms when we are invited to record and um, record activities and events that some of our volunteers have put together. And to actually see that in action is a beautiful thing to see. Some of the information that is in the video just a little bit of snippets also include some of the construction that is going on in our district this year, which is largely in part to our community support as well. So David is going to take it from here and introduce the video as well. And the great thing about uh, this past school year is we have more than an abundance of uh, great things that have happened this school year. So it is, uh, it is like Jael said, very exciting to be able to go into the classroom and document some of the great things that are happening in this district. And we're happy to be able to present just a small portion of some of the great things we've seen this year. Fridley School District is located within four square miles in the city of Fridley, Minnesota. The district serves about 3,000 students in early childhood through grade 12 in two elementary schools, a middle school, and a high school. The district also has a community education center that includes an area learning center, Hayes Elementary, Stevenson Elementary, Fridley Middle School, and Fridley High School are all authorized IB World Schools. IB programs provide unique academic rigor that emphasizes students' personal development into inquiring, knowledgeable young people who are motivated to succeed. As part of the IB curriculum, students work on personal projects that are shared with the community during open houses. These long-term projects are designed as an independent learning skill that formally assess each student's self-management, research, communication, critical and creative thinking, and collaboration skills. Fridley Middle School also hosts History Day, another opportunity for students to research and share a topic of their choosing on important persons or events from the past that have shaped our current world. During the 2015-16 school year, 13 Fridley High School seniors in the IB Diploma Program completed six college-level courses and examinations over two years. These students are candidates for the IB Diploma. Fridley High School was ranked 41st this year by U.S. News & World Report for the state of Minnesota. 
We are proud of the work both our students and faculty do to earn this distinction out of the over 1,300 high schools throughout the state. Throughout the school year, student achievement is recognized and celebrated. Each month at the high school, students are recognized as Students of the Month. The ALC holds quarterly celebrations of excellence. Fridley Middle School has an annual academic all-star breakfast. This year, many of our students demonstrated greatness in their academic careers. Over $102,000 in scholarships were awarded during the annual academic achievement ceremony at Fridley High School. Jacob Hofstad competed at the prestigious annual Harvard-MIT Mathematics Tournament. Parker Brady and Aaron Larson were both named National Merit Scholarship Commended Students and National Interscholastic Swim Coaches Association Academic All-Stars. Praise Hall was awarded a full college scholarship through QuestBridge and will be attending Bowdoin College in Maine this fall. Katherine Stevenson qualified as a semifinalist in the National Merit Scholarship Program. Keenan Allen and Katherine Barrett were named Fridley High School's AAA Award recipients. The prize is given to one male and one female with a GPA of 3.0 or higher who have excelled in the classroom, on the athletic field, and in the fine arts. Riley Johnson received Fridley High School's Athena Award based on her academic career and athletic achievements. Suzanne Gilreath, Christina Collins, Taloch Pal, and Brooke Teff all signed letters of intent to attend colleges on athletic scholarships. Julia Swensrud at Fridley High School was awarded a pre-college summer session at the Minneapolis College of Art and Design, as well as winning a Gold Key Award at the Minnesota Scholastic Arts Award competition. Of the 188 students who graduated from Fridley Public Schools this year, more than one-third did so with honors, maintaining GPAs of 3.25 or higher. Fridley High School expanded its Emergency Medical Responder course to include emergency medical technician training this year. One student has already passed national certification and is able to provide services on an ambulance rig. Students at the Area Learning Center took part for the first time in the state e Olympics, placing third out of 43 teams. Subjects in the competition included math, logic, geography, art, English, and science, among others. The Hour of Code was introduced at Stevenson Elementary, where Code Camp quickly grew into a weekly after-school activity. Some of the additional changes in our district have included the retirements of Dr. Rob Smith at the ALC and high school principal Renee Van Gorp. We are pleased to announce their replacements have already begun working. Patty Awesome, new high school principal, comes to us from Hopkins High School. Amy Cochran, former assistant principal at the middle school, is now principal of the ALC. Hi, I'm Peggy Flathman, the superintendent of Fridley Public Schools. I'm out here in front of the high school. As you can see, much construction is going on over the summer. We are very grateful for the community support last November of the $27.5 million worth of building bond referendum. This summer is phase one with safety and security upgrades in all of our buildings and additions at our two elementaries and construction here at the high school. Let's go in and take a look. The referendum bond proceeds are allowing the district to enhance safety and security systems in each building. Complete deferred maintenance projects, such as repair or replacement of aging roofs, floors, windows, interior and exterior walls, and heating and ventilation systems, upgrade classroom technology at each building to ensure more access for all students, and address space issues at specific school buildings. The three phases of projects began this summer at the high school. Fire suppression systems at the middle and high schools, and enhanced security at the high school entrance. The original gym floor has been removed and an updated drain tiling system installed. Bleachers have also been removed to install modern safe seating. The auditorium remodel is also in full swing. The original seats have been removed to allow for the installation of upgraded seating. A handicapped elevator is being put in and the sound system is being upgraded to modern equipment. 
At both elementary schools, an additional wing has been added with classrooms to handle increased student population. Fridley Public Schools earned Storm Ready certification from the National Weather Service this year, one of only three schools in the state to receive such designation. Communities with the status have demonstrated internal systems to continuously monitor weather conditions and preparations for emergency weather events. Fridley School District students, teachers, and schools continue to benefit from the generous support of our community. The second annual School Resources Fair supplied 500 backpacks filled with much-needed school supplies for district students prior to the start of the school year. In May, Fridley Public Schools recognized and honored volunteers who support students and schools by volunteering their time and resources. For the fifth year, volunteers are nominated by individual schools for their year-long service to students, staff, and or programs. Faith-based organizations throughout the area continued their partnership with the district. Leaders meet with district representatives quarterly to learn of needs and opportunities to help students and their families. Area businesses, civic groups, families, and or individuals made significant financial and gift contributions to our schools this year, including Medtronic, Target, Fridley Lions, Walmart, and the Fridley Columbia Heights Rotary Club. Besides money, gift cards, dictionaries, technology equipment, and books were also donated. The fifth annual Fridley Kids in Action 5K Fun Run was held in May. Funds raised by the event are used to support service learning projects at Hayes and Stevenson Elementary Schools. Fridley Key Club made and donated blankets for those in need and raised money for homelessness prevention by sleeping outside on the football field for a night. Fridley's chapter of the National Honor Society hosted its annual blood drive in March, collecting 130 pints of blood for the American Red Cross. Students participating in Fridley Middle School's Public Achievement Program assisted military veterans at a special lunch event in March. The brainchild of sixth grader Jacob Wolf his classmates quickly jumped in with the mission of, Today we're going to serve and help you however we can. With the help of our community, Hayes fourth graders raised over $5,000 to help an elementary school in Haiti install two purified water stations as part of H2O for life. Medtronic teamed up with an anonymous Fridley couple to donate instructional books and Android tablets for the bedtime math program at Stevenson. As we prepare for the 2016-17 school year, Fridley Public Schools continues to offer excellent education options for families where students enjoy the many opportunities presented to them, as well as the wonderful support of the surrounding community. Thank you to all the members of the Fridley Public Schools community for a successful year, and we are eager to get started on another great school year. How? Um, I will add that this video is also going to be posted on our district's YouTube channel so that uh, our community members can also see the great work that's going on in the district. Thanks to David. Very he did nice an amazing David. job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Next up, uh, voluntary pre-K enrollment. Um, yes, uh, we were notified uh, right after uh, um, August 1st that we are one of the recipients of um, the state funding for pre-K, voluntary pre-K for four-year-olds. Um, and so at this time, if you have a four-year-old that's in our census, um, you have already received a letter. Um, if you have not received it and do have a four-year-old, um, here is the information um, to call. Um, our enrollment center, which is 763-502-5081. Um, and for general information regarding the program itself, you can call Renee Sorgenfree, and uh, she is 763-502-5124. Um, we will have two sessions, or two half-day sessions in the morning and in the afternoon. Um, and so we're taking enrollments at this particular time. 
I have a question. So um, what if there is a family that lives in the city of Fridley that is not within our school district that is interested? Are they eligible to enroll their um, preschooler? You know, at this time, yes, they would be. We will be taking enrollments. And once we get to capacity, that will close enrollments for this year. Um, next year, we may do a process a, a bit differently, but this year, because of the late notice, um, we are taking um, students that we have room for. Um, we also have uh, um, conversations with um, our child care through community education, and so we have some wraparound services that are available, and Renee would be able to give you that information as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we move on to business action items, and we have several policies uh, in their second reading, beginning with a fund balance policy. Matthew. Yeah, so ton tonight we're bringing forward the second reading of policy 798, fund balance. Uh, this is a policy that we've uh, changed the fund balance percentages from 5 to 8% of unassigned expenditures to 7 to 10 uh, percent of unassigned expenditures, and there are no changes from the first reading on this policy. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, three policies uh, that I believe, Jael, you will talk to us a little bit about on second readings. Yes, thank you. The first uh, policy is 608, Instructional Services or Special Education. This is just uh, to provide um, policy that uh, some students with special uh, needs require additional support, and there have not been any other additional changes to the first reading. Uh, the second one is policy 215, which is school board public participation. Uh, this policy was previously included in policy 997, which, is, which follows this one for communications and community engagement. It has been separated to provide more clarity for school board uh, particip uh, public participation and guidelines and format. And there have not been any other changes since the first reading. Policy 997, Communications and Community Engagement, which is a general uh, statement of policy for how the district um, outlines plans to engage its community. And there have not been any other changes to this one as well. So these are submitted for second reading. I move we accept the second reading and the adoption of policies 798, 608, 215, and 997. Second. We have a motion by Sampson, seconded by Lindblad, to approve the second reading and adoptions of the four policies mentioned. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the policies pass. Next item up is the consent agenda, which uh, contains uh, the routine action items, uh, including the minutes of the regular school board meeting and work session that were held July 19th, 2016, the monthly financial reports, new contracts, amendments, leaves of absence, termination, resignations, and retirements, the student handbooks for Fridley High School, Fridley Middle School, uh, the Fridley Moore Lake Area Learning Center, and Hayes Elementary School, as well as Stevenson Elementary Schools. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Delvo, seconded by Sturdivant, to approve uh, the consent agenda. Um, I think we had talked a little bit in our work session about uh, we will be uh, asking for a few changes to the uh, handbooks um, based on our discussions uh, from earlier today. If not, uh, is there any further discussion? If not, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the consent agenda passes. Next up is the written information beginning with student enrollment. So if you look on uh, page 202, um, you see the um, daily report that we, we have them daily. We just gave you Friday's report there. Um, and you can see that we're in, in uh, very good shape overall for our district enrollment projections um, and in line with our daily report. However, it is August 12th's information, and there are still a lot of comings and goings um, for students uh, in and out of the district. Um, and so these, we pay particular attention to these on a pretty regular basis, particularly um, class sizes that are approaching uh, times in which we may need to adjust some staffing. And um, as you have in the past, uh, we 
um, we'll come to you with those recommendations if we see fit. Um, we noticed earlier in our work session that our kindergarten numbers are not at projection, but they are in line with the trends that we have typically seen. Um, so again, um, as Matthew said last month, we are, our, uh, our enrollment for last year was up f over what we had predicted, and um, it looks like we could continue to do that trend again this year. But again, it's very early. Right, thank you. Next uh, item from written information is the first reading of some policies, uh, beginning with one on energy utilization and management. Mr. Hammer. Tonight we have the first reading of uh, policy 854, energy and utilization management. Uh, this policy revolves around um, the necessity for the district to ensure we're using our resources efficiently and effectively and also uh, make sure that we point out this is a group effort and all parties are responsible from administrators to teachers to staff to, to students. Um, so tonight we submit uh, the first reading of policy 854, energy utilization management. And this is a totally new policy, is it not? Yes, that is correct. All right. All right, thank you. Uh, next, uh, Ms. McLemore will invite you back up again to talk about uh, three additional policies. Okay, thank you. First policy is policy 506 on student discipline. And some of the additional information here that has been included is um, provision giving teachers general control and governance over the classrooms, as well as notification of policy violations. So the additional uh, language that has been uh, incorporated um, includes some of the um, last legislative sessions and um, reporting of incidents of assault by students on teachers. So this is a section that was previously not included in here and also giving a little bit of clarity as to grounds of which students can be removed from the classroom when assault has occurred on a teacher or a staff member. Some of this language also provides more clarity as to what staff includes and providing a clear definition of uh, some of the support staff that works with our students every day. So that is submitted for fast reading. The second policy is policy 520 on student uh, surveys. Periodically, the district will survey their students uh, when they are looking for um, information from, uh, because this is an important uh, group of stakeholders for the student. And the additional information and changes in this policy just provides uh, clarity as to how we notify parents that we are going to be surveying their students and gives them an option of opting their students out. It also allows the districts to inform parents that they can review the materials or the survey itself so that they have a better understanding of what kind of questions we'll be asking their students and they can choose to, um, to decide whether their students can participate in that or not. So that is also submitted for fast reading. We are also going to make sure that we provide notice in language that our parents and guardians uh, speak at home so that uh, they understand what we are providing for them. Uh, policy 529 is notification to staff regarding placement of students with violent behavior. And uh, this uh, section includes additional information on general policy, data collection of incidences, and um, sharing of that data with appropriate staff members. So as multiple people work with students in the district, if there are incidences like that, this policy provides guidelines as how to document that because part of the reporting also has to be to the MDE and who should they share that information in the district so that they are providing the kind of support they need for students but also that documentation is available for the staff members who work for the, those students. So that is also submitted for fast reading. Right. Thank you. And as always, these policies will be available on our website uh, should any uh, member of the community be interested in, in reading them also. Next up is reports from school board members beginning with the Northeast 916 uh, board meeting. Marsha. Well, we had a meeting um, August 4th, and much of the uh, meeting was spent doing some organizational items and housekeeping. Uh, the one item of interest that I'll share is um, there's the Capital View Center, which is located in Roseville. 
and the Capital View Center, it's an alternative learning program, and it's a full day special education program for students in grades six through 12. And it's serving the student population with emotional and behavior disorders whose needs can't be met in their home districts, so they come to Capital View with the intent that they will develop the skills necessary to be able to return home to their um, local school district. They, um, the building is very obsolete at this point, and there's a new facility being built on the site, and students and staff um, submitted many different names and they voted and came up with the the new name for the school which will it will be called the Quora Education Center and Quora is the plural for quorum and they liked that because the name reflects the diverse group of students and staff coming together for a common goal and like I said, the groundbreaking just took place, so it'll be a while before that's open. All right, thank you. Next up would be AMSD, uh, Mary Kay. Yes, we had a very interesting presentation. Um, we had a physician named Cone Iber from the University of Minnesota. He's their medical director of sleep medicine. And uh, Kyla Wallstrom from the University of Minnesota's College of Education and Human Development, as well as Julie Dahl, who is a board member on the Minnesota Sleep Society. And they shared with us the impacts of um, the effects of sleep deprivation in school aged children, particularly around adolescents and what's happening physiologically in their bodies and how sleep impacts their decision making. In the, the research has revealed a number of really um, important things for us to keep in mind as parents and educators. Uh, there's, they um, were able to show connection and correlation between sleep deprivation and increased accidents, increased emotional deregulation, uh, decreased academic achievement, increased depression, um, and a number of other things. So really taking a look at that and it's informing school boards across the state to have conversations around uh, school schedules and sleep, et cetera. Um, the research also revealed sort of the sweet spot for uh, start time for adolescents is between 8.15 and 8.30. So Fridley is pretty on par with that. We start at 8.10. So um, have not been way out of that, that range even before we knew that that research window. So um, we'll keep talking about that, but it's, it's, it was some very important and useful information for us to have. All right, thank you. Uh, finally, we have uh, important future school board dates. We have a very busy month coming up, it looks like, uh, beginning uh, on August 22nd at 7.30 a.m. We have badge pictures for staff uh, throughout the district. Followed that uh, immediate by the new teacher breakfast meet and greet that'll take place at 8 a.m. at the Fridley Community Center. The community resource fair and backpack giveaway, August 27th, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Fridley Middle School. The teacher's opening workshop, August 29th, 7.30 a.m. at the Banquets of Minnesota uh, facility on Highway 65. The first day of school, September 6th for all students at Hayes and Stevenson, uh, the kindergarten orientation, as well as all new students in grades five and nine, and those new students that are new to our district at the middle school, high school, and the ALC. First day of school for all students then will take place Tuesday, September 7th. Wednesday. Wednesday, excuse me, that is right, Wednesday. That's all right. It's that uh, AMSD Board of Directors, their next meeting will be held Friday, September 9th at 7 a.m. at the Thai Center. The next regional meeting for C will be Friday, September 9th at 9.30 at the Massa Boardroom. The next Northeast Metro 916 board meeting will be held September 14th at the Bel Air School at 6 p.m. And our next Fridley Public School Boards meeting will be held September 20th, work session 5.30 in our regular location here at Conference Room A in the City Hall. The open forum at 7 p.m., also in Conference Room A and our business meeting here in the City Council Chambers at 7.30. Unless anyone has any additional items, I would uh, accept a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn.
Second. I have a motion by Lindblad, second by Sternevet to adjourn the meeting at 8 o'clock. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.